Good evening, you're watching News Cafe on the Solar News Channel. I'm Mitzi Borromeo. Tonight, our guest is a multi-talented, empowered woman, an actress, writer, and director renowned for her films Kung Mawawala Ka pa and Inago Mo Na Ang Lahat Sa Akin. She is also a breast cancer survivor and activist, co-founding I Can Serve Foundation. She is Bibeth Orteza. Good evening. Hello, Mitzi. Hello. It's wonderful Good to evening. be with you. That... And it's uh, wonderful to be here. Yes. I've been really busy for a stretch, so um, I was supposed to have been here some time ago, but I couldn't really make yes. it. Well, wonderful, at least. <laughs> Better late than never. So we're going to take a little walk down memory lane mm -hmm. <laughs> in your, your extraordinary life. How did you get into the whole showbiz industry? Well, um, I really wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. Oh. Um, I made my, I turned my application in Sayupi College of Law, but I was late, mm. which is the story of my life, late. So um, <laughs> I heard there was an opening um, as in the News and Public Affairs Department of RPN 9, mm -hmm. and so I took the exam. Okay. And uh, I think they chose between me and someone who was also a member of the UP Writers Club, like I was, but she had just gotten married and had a baby. So, uh, whereas I looked like I was ready to to stay late in in the station, so yeah. they got me in. Ready to be worked to the bone. This was in 1975. Yeah. I remember um, graduation was uh, a Friday, Monday. I was already at work. Wow. So you felt that urge to write. You really had no. I just to wanted to. I, I just wanted to have a job. Yeah. Um, I couldn't imagine not doing anything or, or waiting for, for something. Yeah. I just had to move it. Yeah. So. So how did you find? Basically, you found your calling when you got into that job. Did you and really then, like it? Well, uh, those days you had to have a curfew pass. Yes. Um, you didn't have a curfew pass, you had no choice, but stay in the studio until 4 o'clock in the morning, which was when the curfew ended mm -hmm. um, in those days. Also, all the sitcoms were taped in the day mm -hmm. because uh, actors, the likes of Sila Pugo and then Sila Dolphy, yes. they, they taped during the day. They were more comfortable working in the day. The drama anthologies were taped at night. Yes. So I was watching the sitcoms as they were taped. I was watching uh, the drama series uh, as they were taped. I was reading the scripts and getting training right on the spot. I was a writing major in college, mm -hmm. but writing for print. Yes. Which is a... Very different from yeah. broadcasting. Well, not television. really different in the sense that even no matter what you write, you always have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm. So, um, not, but, but, the, but the styling and the knowing what to do and what not to do, um, that's how I... That's why that's how I got in, and then because you know it was curfew, and in in college I was part of the theater group. I was founding member and oh. uh, former chair of the UP Repertory Company, mm -hmm. so I had I had the acting background. Yes. So um, doing doing uh, or staying in the studio late at night, my friends who were in production who always dragged me in to act out certain parts like. Like, you know, I've done this role so many times. You're the doctor in, uh, you're supposed to be the doctor. You just performed the <laughs> surgery. Um, so there's one scene where you go out and then you're taking your uh, mask, the, off. Yeah, uh, mask off. And then you shake your head and you look at the parents of whoever's operated mm -hmm. on. Or you say, it's a boy. Yeah. Or you say, it's a girl. <laughs> you know, and then I've been secretary again. And You've the, done the whole it line all. of character bits. Well, as a writer, director, actress, which do you like best? Is there one you prefer over the other? Whatever comes. Mm -hmm. Whatever comes. So, so that's how I got in the... And then came the morning show with Ariel Loretta. Yes. Um, Ariel Loretta had the morning show. Mm -hmm. um, I was writer. I was one of the writers. Our senior writer was Lika Benitez, uh, who would later go on ahead to do Sesame Street in Manila, mm -hmm. um, which became Batibot. Anyway, yeah. um, there was also... Um, daylight savings time. Mm. So what was really 5.30 became 6.30. We couldn't guests, we couldn't get guests to appear on the show. That's tough. So 
and then because I was really Visayan, they dragged me in to, you know, to fill up segments and then we'd have mm. how to's and mm -hmm. how to do this, how to clean a uh, long playing jacket and, and stuff like that. And I would do it in the Visayan accent. Wow. And then so then before I knew it, I was guesting already in in TV sitcoms. Yeah. I was I was writing sitcoms now, guesting TV sitcoms. And then, then the f came, came the films, and mm -hmm. that's how I... I of course, started. TV sitcoms, we all remember you in Iskul Bukul, that was in the 70s. That is, you know of course... You know how old I am? <laughs> well, I, I, I just turned 60 last December. You look wonderful. So, oh, because Life I, begins at 60. <laughs> and I also had a facelift, that's the truth. Um, <laughs> you look gorgeous. Because <laughs> uh, my mother-in-law said, eh, if you if you go through a facelift and you don't want people to talk behind your back about your facelift, you'll be the first to admit that you've had a facelift. Might as well be proud yeah, of something so, you did. <laughs> you know, why not? Yeah. So, so there I was. Um, I've, my age, I've done sitcoms and acted with, with Pugo, mm. uh, with Patsy. I've the written script with Chichai. Yeah. And, you know, uh, growing up, because I, I, I used to be enamored talaga, with the comedy. I'm, I'm half Waray and half Ilongo. Mm. And I get the strong survivor instincts and, and the laughing side of me. I, I got it really from my mother's side of the family, the Waray. So mm -hmm. um, every night, bef long before the advent of sitcoms on, on TV, it yeah. was a radio. I first heard of, of, of comedy with uh, beer florist scripts. Mm. Written by, uh, um, written for Pugo yes. and Bentot, and then uh, adding Fernando scripts mm. for Dolphy. Mm. So that was really that was really my life. I, I and then when the time came that I was working with them, I just I was just really the happiest yeah. kid. Well, Dolphy the, the king. You wrote the book about Dolphy. One of the well, there's this one when I'm when I'm asked. Um, and I, I, I got to be in this mode shortly after the great man passed, yes. no? Mm -hmm. um, sometime in late, the late 70s, yes. um, in the wake of Doro de los Ojos, mm -hmm. a comedian, um, they were all there, the comedians, and then Dolphy arrived with Adin Fernando and uh, with Conde Obaldo. Mm -hmm. And then I, that was when I was there, I was a young uh, TV writer, a sitcom writer. Mm -hmm. And then, they, they, have, they, have, um, they have like a ritual. Uh, a comedian is dead. And then they're all like court jesters, but they have a king. And yeah. they were all cracking jokes, trying to make Dolphy laugh. Yeah, it must have been hard. What was and it like? And then uh, the one who made Dolphy laugh was Balot. He, mm. The husband of Martin Timon Cruz. He, he cracked the joke and then he said, Padre ko nga, namatay. Sabi niya sa asawa niya, gusto niya pag namatay siya sa kabaong, itsura niya, parang natutulog lang. So pag silip namin, nakita namin ang kumpara namin, parang natutulog lang, nakagalan sa kabaong. <laughs> Diyan pala nag-umpisa yun. And um, Dolphy laughed. Yeah. And then that broke the ice. And then mm. parang the grief was lifted. Right. Years, years later, years, years later, when we were doing the book for Dolphy, I asked him about that night. Mm. I said, what was that for? Mm -hmm. And then he said, it's a circle. You just want to break uh, the grief. Mm -hmm. That's why you do that. Yeah. So I was so struck by it, especially as, as Dolphy was the only one there who was dressed in an all white outfit. Yeah. And parang we were all um, followers in a pack. And he was there, he was so clearly king. Well, it's nice to see what people think of you while you're alive, no? <laughs> while you're still around. Yeah. So, well, your time at UP, you talked about being Warai and the strong-willed character. At UP, you were actually uh, quite the character there. Men were intimidated, intimidated by you. That's what they say. <laughs> I heard this story never, about at the lagoon, no? the sunken garden. I never had, I never had a boyfriend in UP. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then girls were, they, had, they were talking about holding hands and kissing. I never went through that in UP. So, um, <laughs> and it was kind of pressure, right? They look at you if you were there with your uh, boyfriend. Yeah, and then the they said, I, was, I think they really thought I was, I was one of the boys. Because mm -hmm. uh, we were doing theater sets and then mm -hmm. we would have to stay overnight in other people's houses because mm -hmm. we didn't have curfew passes. So we, we learned how to, to sleep uh, like this. I think for a lot, a lot yeah. for a great number of women, uh, of my time in UP, 
we developed this, this rather masculine way of, of moving because it was our protection yes. to be among the boys, to be one of the boys, and mm -hmm. to make clear that certain boundaries were observed. Mm -hmm. so, so you just, right away they knew, okay, stay away. And you had other, at the time, well, you were busy with your writing course, of course, but this is where your political activism was fired well, up. Because um, most everybody, naman, no, well, uh, whether you're for or against something, in UP, most everybody believed mm -hmm. in something yes. and stood on it. So yeah. um, it was the environment, yes. that the, yeah, the situation mm, at yes. the time. And then um, I was also with a Philippine Collegian, which mm. was a, and then with a, with what took the place of the Student Council, because right after Marshall Law and Student Council, mm -hmm. this was a consultative um, committee on student affairs, second comsa. So I was pretty much mm -hmm. here and there and. Yeah. Busy buddy. How did that contribute, do you think, to your life as an actress? You know, you're trying to balance all of these things. Because you, you meet so many people. Yeah. And you can source out so many situations on which to base uh, mm -hmm. uh, a certain arc Yes. as an actor. You, you know what it's like. But, but uh, the two things I regret I didn't do as a UP student was I didn't take advantage of all the free language courses that was there for me. Mm. to study. In my time, you, you had to take um, four, tw 12, 12, 12 four, four Spanish subjects. Mm -hmm. So 12. 12 units. And I just barely learned Spanish to pass, but not to speak it. Yeah. So years, years later, and then being in Spain and just barely getting through the language, talagang yeah. ka that yeah. Sana, no? learning the language was right. there for you to to take and you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. I, then as an English major, I had to take, to take uh, Japanese outside of just knowing how to say another one of my one and this ka, <laughs> and you know, what is your name and, and things uh -huh. like this. I, I just really again learned it enough to pass it. Yes. And then the same with, with French. So, nakakahinaya. It's a shame I, when I, we're I, in school, no? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So good advice to the youth out yeah. there. <laughs> talaga, talaga. Take you advantage. have to really take advantage of, of the and then the other thing I'd say that um, I regret not having done as a student was not doing more. Yeah. Because I could really have done so much more. And, but you, are, you have done it. You've done it throughout the life. You, with all no, the... No, in hindsight. In hindsight, yes. talaga. And that's why, that's why when you get to be a parent, you're so makulit. You're always at your kids uh, breathing down their necks. Right. Because you want them to learn from your mistake. You want but, the best for them. But mm -hmm. I guess we never do. I think that the, the first instinct of a teenager is to disobey the parent. Right, you know, that rebellious nature yeah, exactly. in us comes, exactly. takes over I, I keep us. on thinking, every time I fight with my kids, I keep on thinking of my mother <laughs> just laughing at me. <laughs> that's what they always say, you know, when you're a parent, exactly. that's when exactly. you're going to feel it. Yeah. So how are you with your children? I mean, do you encourage them to go into the same field that you're in? Do no, you... my, my son is uh, he's entering the business, yeah. um, but we wanted him to finish college mm. first, so he had to finish mm -hmm. school. And then uh, he annoys me. I annoy him. <laughs> so uh, it's all part yes, of the package. Exactly. And then um, my daughter is she's thinking of taking up law. Yes. So well, if I may ask, of course, the collaboration with your husband, Carlito mm -hmm. Senor Reina. How is it like? I mean, work. Imagine two great minds coming together. When you you worked on many projects together, did no, you? I, but ours, because ours is a friendship. Ours mm -hmm. is is really give and take, and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, every time we celebrate our anniversary, I always say it's another year has passed. Natin iti is kita. We're celebrating. Our, uh, we're, we're, this year will be uh, would have been married for 25 years. Mm. So, and then he. Sabi ko sa kanya, are we going to get? Are we going to go through a renewal of vows? Are we going to get married again? And then he said, I wasn't aware that contract had expired <laughs> and it needed to be renewed. So. Yeah. Um, but he, it, it started as a friendship, so yeah. So we're, it, it's a fact that we're also nicer to our friends than we are to, to family and um, to family. And, Familiarity uh, breeds contempt, yes, they say, but, right? <laughs> but did you ever find? I mean, imagine you live together, then you work together. Could that have been a source of conflict at points in your life? 
No, but really, husbands, the man, wives, you're always in conflict with each other. <laughs> That's true. You always try to arrive at something. So, That's true. Oh, I mean, it's, it sounds so corny and really, really cliche. But, you know, you, you really can't make an omelette without breaking an egg. So, so you, you fight, husband. Even if you're not the director and the writer living together, you just really like to fight because I like this shade for my comforter and you cannot have your, you know. You yeah. fight about everything. This, vit this vitamin brand is better than your <laughs> vitamin brands. It's all part of the relationship. Yeah, but just, just as we know that there's a bottom line, mm -hmm. it's an awfully corny monogamous relationship. It makes it all more <laughs> exciting. Yeah. 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 Well, apart from these fights that you know that happen domestically, you've taken a lot of fights in for social causes. Uh, so, what are some of the social issues that you've been very passionate about? Well, we stood, Carlitos and I stood together, um, making a statement against electoral fraud. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, in the, the, so many you campaigned very strongly for Fernando Po Jr. Yes. You really yes. believe that he would have been a good president, oh, yes. right? So do you do that? You do some political campaigning also on the, when you can, no? You did it no, for well, Jesus. No, not really I... campaigning. Carlitos and I do stuff for people that we believe in. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do it for the money. I say the problem, like, well, when there was, you do things for money. Uh, you direct commercials or come up with concepts. Parang what happens there is, you get paid industry rates. Mm -hmm. But when you um, do things with, with people you believe in, like for instance, um, when there was still uh, the PDAF, I would ask a senator friend to say, uh, you know, there's this activist at the National Kidney Center mm -hmm. to cover the bills there for a former teacher in a government hospital in Bohol for another former teacher, for a, yeah. for a teacher in Mindanao. Mm -hmm. So, Yun. Yeah. Well, I'd like to talk to you more about those social issues later on. But for now, I'd like to also ask you about another fight that you overcame, your battle with cancer. Uh -huh. So, you are now 10 years yeah. cancer-free. Wonderful. So, what, in 2004, you were diagnosed, no? With I cancer. was diagnosed in 2004. I, the symptoms were there. I didn't really listen to my body. Um, I had low-grade fevers mostly every night. I was always tired, but I thought it was because I had been, I felt sad that FBJ had been cheated, so mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. completely misreading. You were stressed yes. at the time, no? So, and then in August of 2004, I quit smoking. Mm. And then uh, my appetite came back and I got big, so I went into boxing. Mm -hmm. to keep myself fit. Yeah. I think my body got relatively healthy and what was wrong surfaced. Mm. Um, instinctively, I knew there was something wrong with me. You felt it. Um, I, I, I would have yearly mammograms, but nothing would show. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I kept at it. And then finally, they found uh, the shadow, the doctors found the shadow of a lymph node involvement in the armpit. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was how I found out that I had something. I went to the hospital November 8th, November 16th. Uh, I was in the hospital for my mastectomy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And since then, of course, imagine your life took a total change from being very busy, hectic schedule. You had to slow down. No, but still, no, I think I got this year after the cancer. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes, you did say you didn't want cancer to stop you because yeah. you were active with yeah. Gabriella. Because, um, no, because, because it's, when, it's when you're, you're in bed and you, you feel the uncertainty that you want to get into doing more certain things. Mm. Um, I went back to doing my rallies. I went back mm. to um, doing this and that because I'd been in bed and... and yeah. I just didn't want to die. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted to be of service not only to family and friends but also to the community. Mm -hmm. Because I was thinking, if I died, I'd, I'd like to have people remember me kahit papano. Yes. Because that means um, I'd get extended somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's why every up to now when I go out and, and speak for groups of cancer survivors, I, I always say, because it's happened to me, um, cancer diagnosis is not a death sentence. Yes. 
That's right. It's not a death sentence. As a matter of, the upside is you get a ringside ticket to the first night of your wake. Hmm. Because immediately you know uh, how the people who are praying for you, immediately you feel how much you are loved, which is not what people get when they suddenly kill over from a heart attack or, you know. Yeah, you have time to actually. Anyway, yeah, we, we all die anyway. Except That's true. We, We're we, all going to end We don't there. know when or how. So, so parang, okay, so, so I have cancer. How do I get treatment? Who are the other women? going through this, self-pity just could not fit in because I'm really madaldal. I mm. like engaging people in conversation. Mm -hmm. So there's one time I was uh, waiting for my turn in the, for radiation. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was chatting with a woman. I said, Paano mo nalaman na meron kang cancer? Masakit ba? Mm -hmm. And then she said, matter-of-factly, she said, hindi ko malaman ko anong pagkakaiba ng sakit dahil meron akong bukol sa suso o dahil ginugulpi ako ng asawa ko. Terrible. Yeah, so you imagine. hear someone like that, and she was brave, and she wasn't calling attention to the fact that she was being um, beaten up. Mm -hmm. She just, I felt this so small, yeah. yeah, and at the same time so brave because if this woman can can do it, can take it, so could I. Right. I mean, you go through cancer, sure, but but uh, there are a lot more people in in worse situations so right, you just yeah. you just need to continue yeah. and trying to so you've been very active for this cause you joined I can serve foundation fi founded by Kara Mag Magano yes Alipa. so I, you did actually co-found it no, no I didn't I did I'm joined. not a, I'm not a co-founder yeah, so what do you do as I, a I'm volunteer a, I'm um, a spokeswoman mm -hmm. of um of I can serve mm -hmm. and then I also host our I can eat we have two <laughs> huge parties in a year it's always held in my house, one in May and then mm -hmm. one in one in December, November. Mm -hmm. The last Saturday of November is always our our Christmas party. Yes, and uh, it's 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 been. So it's the been point really of great. I can serve. They always try to remind women to go for early detection. Early detection. Yeah, we very. Have an, we have I think they've been information seminars in all over the country. Right. Uh, we have. Uh, early screening programs and mm -hmm. we're not really we don't come up with funds to to help people yes. chemo uh, do, do chemo we we know of the agencies that can be tapped how to go around asking for support and for help how mm -hmm. to look for the specific um uh, because there are trials there are, yes. there are um, chemo drug trials and if you want to avail of it and uh, that's what we do. Okay. All right. We'll talk a little more about that later on. But for now, News Cafe will return after these messages. You're still watching News Cafe on the Solar News Channel, and we are with our guest, Bibeth Orteza. Okay, Bibeth, so we were talking about your journey through cancer. Now, one thing you're very much known for is you said that if you're wearing mismatched shoes, who cares if I have one breast? <laughs> so I love what you've done with okay. the statement you make with your different shoes. My, my wearing, <laughs> it started like this, you see? Yes, look, it's, I love that. The red and the blue shoe, <laughs> always. Okay. Um, How did in, that I was doing chemo in 2005. When you're doing chemotherapy, you have a chair like this, and then there's a foot on there, and your feet are up, like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can't do much but stare at your shoes. And I was staring <laughs> at my shoes. I was like, how corny it must be to go through life wearing, wearing things that completely match. Mm. And then I realized, what did I have that didn't match? My husband and I are not a match because he's this and I'm that. And uh, we come from completely opposite backgrounds, but we perfectly complement each other. Mm. So things should complement than just match. Mm -hmm. How can I insist on shoes that match when one, the, light, the, the, the left breast is real and the right breast is not? Mm -hmm. And then entering my fourth chemo, my mother-in-law gave me um, a pair of red shoes, and I had exactly the same style in blue. So I did my, my next chemo, my fourth chemo, wearing a red shoe and a blue shoe. Mm. And it made me so light and so giddy yeah. looking at the shoes. And then 
but that was in 2005. And then I went back to wearing regular shoes. And then 2009, I started wearing mismatching more often. Mm. Towards 2010, 11, 12, 13, hindi na ako talaga nag You started it before Gaultier yeah. and all yeah. of them started para, para it. Yeah. I, I, feeling that there is more symmetry in asymmetry. Mm -hmm. so, Even your glasses, if we may show, look at the, the glasses are asymmetrical. I love that deeper meaning to your, there, there they are, a statement, because you said the symmetry you find with your cancer sisters, yeah. right? And so, it's, it's, of course, when, when, when things work, even if you think they're not going to work, Mm. But there's real symmetry yeah. there. But. Well, what did that feel like as a woman, you know, how we are? Where it can mean a lot when you're, the, the hair, the skin, you know, I mean, the, the breasts, of course. When you're beginning to lose your hair, a lot of cancer survivors. I think, survivors, I think we, we want to look good because we want thinking that that's how we get loved when you look good. Mm -hmm. But yeah. when you have cancer and people reach out to you and make, them, make you feel that you are loved, you mm -hmm. realize that losing hair is nothing. Having only one breast is nothing, mm -hmm. because it's the love that's made up for it. Yes, yes. So, so how did that change let's say, in terms of your, because you did not stop, you said, with your work. How did that change your lease in life with work, with directing, acting, writing? You got busier. Yeah. I said. Do you think it served as a source of inspiration? Yeah, it, it so. did, it did. And yeah. you, you want to also so much um, try to inspire other people mm -hmm. with what you do. Yeah. Every October, which is Breast Cancer Month, you go around the hospitals, right? Yes. Sharing your story. Uh, sharing my story, but that's not just um, October, like January is Cancer Month. Okay. All the cancer. So Sorry, Breast I Cancer Month pala is October. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So you fairly do. And the, and the thing with cancer, because it's getting cancer is just like being hit by true love. Mm. You mm. get it once, you get it for real. You don't. You may recover from the the first cancer that you have. You could get it again. Mm -hmm. So the best thing really is to just acknowledge that you will go. Yeah. You will go no matter how. You don't know when. Uh, so you just continue yeah. with what. What you're matters doing. is how yes. you live, right? Yeah. 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 And doing what. Well, you do I, I I just suddenly remembered about the shoes. You were a UP regent, and yes. during one of the processions, was it? You were wearing the shoes. It's funny. Yeah. Many people are saying she's, you know, making the situation more lively or you know, so, lightening the academic. Uh, scene. Oh, but always, um, even when I took my oath I, in in Malacanang, I was wearing shoes that didn't match. Even when I'm Ninang, <laughs> in Carlitos was so furious because I was Ninang in a wedding. And uh, the priest was also from the from the UP group and the bride. And then I was walking down the aisle, and pati yung mga tao doon sa simbahan ako ganon, they were looking at my at my feet. So Carlitos tries to explain it as something that I do, though, so people don't look at the wrinkles on my face. <laughs> Catch attention to other yeah. parts of the body. I think no matter what you do, people will really look at you because of who you are, what you've done. Well, let's talk about the film industry. Okay. Of course, you've been around. You're, you are a legend with, in no, the Philippine no, no. film industry no, no, today. No, no. Uh, How would you I, compare today to your, your starting days? Uh, first... The industry today. The what industry was kinder then. But the thing is, when we were there at that time, we didn't think also it was kind. You know, because mm. you don't know what, what, what will come yet. So, yeah. But... Uh, in the older days, walang pelikula na nalulugi. Hmm. Because um, walang piracy. Films would fairly get around the entire archipelago. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you may make big money with some movies, other regular money, um, just regular income, but essentially walang nalulugi na, na pelikula. Mm. We were among the top five producing... Uh, yes. Uh, countries, no? yes, yeah. film-producing countries. Yeah. Um, I, when we went to to Bangkok in nineteen, what year was this? Nineteen ninety-three, nineteen ninety-four, for the mm. ASEAN Film Festival, the Philippines was producing anywhere from four hundred to three hundred fifty films a year. Bangkok yeah. at that time was doing only eleven, twelve movies a yeah. year, yeah. and now. Uh, now we're down uh, in, 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 in Bangkok. They're doing um, mga 80 films because mm -hmm. they've, also, they've also employed their uh, protectionism, mm -hmm. protectionist policies for their local films, mm -hmm. which we yeah. don't do yeah. here in the Philippines, whereas we can. 
Yeah. Because that's specified in the general agreement on tariff and trade. Yeah. But we can actually employ um, protectionist clauses to protect uh, video mm. uh, and film. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, that, it's, that, it's, done, it's done all over Asia. Yeah. Uh, China has a protectionist film policy. Mm -hmm. um, Hong Kong, uh, Bangkok, Malaysia. Sa Philippines lang yeah, but how does this differ then? Looking at the different uh, Asian films, how is the Philippine brand or style of film different from, let's say, Thailand, other Asian films? Only mainstream, mainstream, let's say Thai cinema. Kubikita sila eh. Uh, sa atin hindi naman lahat. Um, dito sa atin, I would say that the movies that really, really make big money now are only the films that are produced by the TV networks. Mm. Yeah, it's more commercial. Yeah, no, no hindi lang even, well, in fairness to the TV networks, they, they do movies naman na maganda, nakita mo naman pinagtrabahuan, nakita mo naman na talaga inisip, except uh -oh. that the level, the, 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 the playing field is not level because the regular um, producer will not have enough money to promote his film mm -hmm. yeah. on television as the television network would have. Yeah. Well, in the Dati kasi, dati, right. hindi pa nagpo-produce ang networks. Uh Oo. -oh. Dati ang producers, producers lang ng film. Dati, mm -hmm. uh, the TV stars were different from the movie stars. Yeah. Pero ngayon, iba na. So do you think we need more government support? Because in other countries, there's government supporting film or the film industry. That, is that what we lack here? Um, in, for, ako, I'm so attracted by the story of, the, of how Korea succeeded in, in spreading its films throughout the world and the culture. Kasi diba dati, it was all China, China. You, there's mm. a Chinatown all over. Now you have Korean towns, mm. whatever place you go to. Mm. Um, when Korea started to rev up its film industry, first thing it did was to drop censorship and then they made political films. Yeah. And then they encouraged the business producers, uh, businessmen to invest in Korean cinema. And pag hindi kumita, it was a tax loss. It was a tax write-off. Mm. And then they also use technology. Um, the films that were easiest to download on the internet were Korean. Mm. Also the music. So it kind of helped but promote. Help promote. Films, yeah. At the same time also instill nationalism in the, in the Korean diaspora. Because kalat kalat na silan lahat all over the world. So the Koreans in London could avail of Korean cinema, Korean music, and all the Korean recipes on the, you know, on the internet. The same with the, in America and all over. Mm -hmm. So, na strengthen lalo yung kanilang nationalism. Yeah. They would still get access to the culture. So, yeah. yun ang ano eh, yun ang parang, yeah. I hope that somebody, somebody gets to the point of using that as a template. Yeah. And, you know, can we do it? Yung parang ganun. Kasi mm -hmm. like, like we're, we're almost there. Bec for instance, um, all of this Marco contest contest like, like X Factor na you know mm. a Filipino wins in ano, Jessica Sanchez gets there an American Idol of this uh, Fontanos yeah, wins in shows. Israel. Um, yeah. There are a lot, and then you have Manny Pacquiao. Uh, Andrew Zimmerman is talking that the next food rage Zimmer. will be Filipino food. Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, so parang uh, yeah, yeah, Andrew Zimmer. The so parang there's. Ituloy, ituloy na. Our indie, indie movies are winning left and right. We've, we've produced a Cannes Film Festival Best Director. Mm -hmm. So, so pa. Yeah. Konti so you pa. think this alternative cinema that was born in about the 70s and 80s, you think this can be recreated now? Um, yeah. Hindi, yung, yung, yung sa 70s and 80s, iba, iba naman ngayon yung, ano eh, yung, yung indie film. I'm not saying that all indie movies are, are great. I mean, mm -hmm. yesterday I lost my temper at the MTRCB because, you know. Uh, <laughs> Why is that? Yes, it you're with the MTRCB as well. It was it was all that good, but but what I'm saying is, mas mara, maraming gumagawa ng magandang pelikula ngayon, mm. and then how really really great that you have a lot of of movie actors also who are willing to to do much for so little. Hindi mm. na yung, because they're at the same time naman they're they're making money from their teleseries, so a lot of them all also want to help. Uh, the indie, yeah. uh, so quanti pa, quanti yeah. Well, in the last Metro Manila Film Fest, no, the ones that were the leading movies were the comedy movies and fantasies. Uh, well, what do you think of that? Well, um, 
I wrote the script of my little bossings, mm, which okay. did very well. I and agree. then I came out in Ten Thousand Hours. Yes, um, I played the president with the initials of GMO. <laughs> um, <laughs> ang goal kasi ng Metro Manila Film Festival is has become to raise funds mm -hmm. for the MMDA, for the Mall Fund, for the Film Academy, they have to make clear what do they want. Mm. Gusto ba nila ng film festival that will service the needs, the artistic satisfaction mm -hmm. of the industry? Edi, yun, yun yung festival na dapat gawin. Sabihin na lang nila dun sa mga commercial, the ones who make box office movies, hindi kayo kasali rito. Uh -oh. okay. This is an artistic festival. Eh, the artistic films lang ang papasok doon. Mm. But if you, do you want a film festival to make uh, the moviegoers happy? Watch movies together as a family. Mm -hmm. mm. Is that your goal? Because if that's your goal, then altogether it's a different set of film, yeah. uh, of, of movies na ipapalabas right. dun sa period right. na yun. And it's true, apparently studies show that Filipinos go to movies as a form of escape. They don't want to, it's, it's more of an economic eh. Pasko, Pasko, nga, oh, oh. Pasko kasi, do they want to wa watch a movie together and bond as families mm -hmm. or as a family? Mm -hmm. Or do you want a, a festival na talagang, uh, do you want to go through Christmas watching a film like Wolf of Wall Street? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, with you, since you talked about inter film fests earlier, when we look at the International Film Fest, many Filipino filmmakers have won awards like Raymond Red, Brillante Mendoza, James Libiran. But there's been some criticism too that the ones that win kind of focus on poverty porn. What would you say to that? It's always the same theme, same story. Um, well, we, we used to do film festivals when we were at, when Reina Films was actively producing film uh, films. As a matter of fact, my mother-in-law was the first was the chairman of the International Film Festival Committee. Com um, this was established under the presidency of uh, Fidel Ramos, Ramos. Hmm. and then made possible by an allocation in the GA, the general uh, da 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 in in Congress mm. under the speakership of Joe de Venecia. Yes. And this the the IFCOM subsidized a films a film that had been selected. The the Filipinos don't choose the films. Huh? Mm. A major film festival ah. will have to choose a movie and then subsidized will be the cost of subtitling and then also uh, the travel cost of um, any of the writer or of the because uh, I'm director lagging libre yan eh. An actor or any of the sound assistant, because uh, they, the committee headed by Armida, they wanted to parang transfer of technology. Mm. How are things done in a festival? Mm -hmm. What kind of films fair? Mm -hmm. And so, so for a while, we that's how we were able to go to such festivals as Berlin, yeah. where we brought the Gaia, uh, no, Celia, mm. the Toronto Film Festival, mm -hmm. and uh, all the other film festivals in the world. So, merong ganon dati. Yeah. Nawala na yon na yon. Uh -oh. And uh, although the directors still travel, on the, uh, are still shouldered by you know by the festivals. Mm -hmm. So the first to have ever gone, done that regularly was Lino Broca, of course. Mm. And then he was very generous with with helping you know with helping the young directors. What is how you do it? Gonna get right, it. right. So. Well, you worked also with, of course, many, apart from many great actors, many great directors. One of them was Mike De Leon, no? You worked together. Yeah, you know, my Baguio. first, the first screenplay I wrote was Palipat, Lipat, Papalit, Palit. It was directed by Lino. And then uh, I've acted with Mike De Leon in Kung Mga Rapkat Magising. Mm. And then I remember we, for that movie, we shot um, in the UP Baguio. Yes. And then uh, that was in 1977. And then in 2011, I went back to UP Baguio. We were doing a play, a monologue. I, was, I, I came out as uh, Edith Burgos in Mrs. B, mm. uh, Mother's Search for, for her son. And as soon as we entered the theater, I saw the exact spot where I sat in Kung Mga Rapkat Magazine. I just lost it. I was like, I'm Yeah, from 1977 to 2011, I, I just completely lost it. And then I, 
nag-flashback yung buhay ko. Oh, dito na pala ako. Yeah, because you had accomplished so much by that, at such a young age and then coming to this point in your life. No, huh? but a lot of, the truth is, which a lot of people, a lot of women have, have accomplished so much more. Mm. For instance, my, my, my good friend, Raquel Villa Vicencio, no? mm -hmm. she started as a production designer. She's won awards for, us, for her production design. Then she went into writing a screenplays. Mm -hmm. She is an accomplished screenwriter. She's won awards for, for her movie. She's written, she wrote Hihin Tayin Kita Sa Langit for yeah. Carlitos. Ah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, in the cinema, pumasok siya sa pag-artisa. Nag-best actress ang ninang ng aking anak na babae. Uh -oh. So, you know, a lot of... And then, and then, yeah. there are so many um, accomplished people. You are part of this wonderful circle of women. And we yeah. still have oh, yeah. many more accomplishments. Yeah, like, for instance, like a really good friend of mine, because we used to be neighbors when we were really young, uh, Gina Alhar. Yes. She mm -hmm. does great work as a director, um, actress director, and tawag sa kanya. She has a ninang of my son. Mm -hmm. And the meaning of her other, of her other son mm -hmm. also. So. All right. Well, hold that thought. We have more to talk about. But right now, News Cafe will return after these messages. You're watching News Cafe on the Solar News Channel, and we're joined by our guest, Bibeth Orteza. All right, Bibeth, earlier we were talking about how you are very passionate about certain causes. Now, back in 2007, you were actually taken into custody in Camp Krame because of the Manila Peninsula siege. Okay, what happened there was this. Um, we had rehearsals for our weekend kita sa Makati. Mm. So every month, uh, for the senior citizens of Makati, Awitang uh, kita, we have a program where we string existing Filipino songs, kundiman, balita, danza, and then make a story, parang opereta of sorts. Mm -hmm. So that day, there was going to be a rehearsal. We, we lived in Alabang then. So merong mm -hmm. rehearsal ang ano, ang awitan kita, Thursday. And then, sabi sa akin ng mother in ko, Uy, bebes, sabi niya ganun, uh, nandyan daw yung grupo. Sa, meron daw grupo dyan ngayon sa... Manila Pen, silipin mo nga, sabi ng mami. Ah. Silipin mo nga, dada, susunduin ka namin ni Carlitos after, mm. sabi niya. Pagkatapos nun, pagkatapos ng rehearsal, samahan mo ako sa CCP kasi she was going to receive an award eh. Mm. Sabi ko, sige. So I went there. And then nagkagulo na nga. Oo. Oh, oh. ano? And then we were asked to leave. Okay. Sabi, o lumabas na rin civilian. Lumabas na yung civilian, lumabas na yung media. All those who had nothing to do with it, go. I turned and then I saw Chifista, Chifista Gingona, the bishop, Dodong oh. Nemenso. They weren't moving at all. Uh, Uncle Tito just calmly stood up. Then he was getting a pair of scissors and then he was cutting... Um, um, what do you call this? Tablecloth. Okay. So I go, what are you doing? I call him Uncle Tito because he and my dad were friends. Eh? Mm. So I go, what are you doing? And then he said, um, in case they use tear gas on us. Oh, they were ready. We can wet this. Yes. So, ganyan, ganyan. so I said, um, in the face of such bravery from the three old guys, my cancer didn't matter. I just couldn't go and antapang nila. Because mm. there was talk inside na baka kung anong mangyari oh, in the soul, baka, baka magkaroon ng bloodbath. It was November and end of November. Mm. Going into Christmas, can the country take it? Yeah. Kung magkagulo. Right. So we weren't there to be part of a rebellion. or to be. Because so those were the charges, uh, right? Yeah. Inciting to rebellion. We just didn't want deaths to take place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just couldn't go. May mga, may mga lumabas eh, nung sinabing umalis kayo, may mga lumabas talaga. Mm -hmm. eh, ako, may talaga, looking at, pag, pag ganun ko talaga, nakita ko ganun eh. Dodong na mensa was seated, nakaganto siya sa kanyang baston. The bishop was praying. Mm. How can you walk out on these guys? Right. So you didn't have a thought in your mind, I shouldn't have gone. You would not do it wala, differently. Wala, wala. So, no. uh, my kids were, my, 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 I called up the house. 
my daughter was not able to take her SATs. She had to move her SATs. My SAT she the next day. Mm. My son was going off to Taiwan to play uh, basketball for the varsity mm -hmm. team of the school. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, go, go. Uh, I, I can manage. So mm. I knew. I knew that I wasn't there for a rebellion thing or something. I just yeah. didn't want bloodbath. Yeah. So. Would you consider yourself a feminist because you're very active with Gabriela, with groups like Makibaka, Babaylan? People uh, call you a feminist. No, uh, I'm I, I get an, an activist. Yeah, you stand for what you believe in, yeah. basically. Yeah. So what are you trying to do uh, right, right now? What are the uh, well, social right, causes that you're really pursuing? Well, like tomorrow is um, the launching of of the book uh, on Maita Gomez. Mm. I'm going there. I'm going mm. to see my, my, my sisters there. But I'm just lang ako sa mga babae who can, who can go work and combine uh, the pleasures of family mm. and doing something also for the community. Yeah. It's nothing really great. I mean, I, I nahihiya naman ako to proclaim how how much of a, an activist I am, because I do so little really compared yeah. to, to what other people do. Yeah. Na nakikita mo, um, pero si Carlitos, mahal nila. Kasi I remember there was this one time, uh, there was a big Gabriela activity. I was in the hospital because I just had my mastectomy. So Carlitos went there to read my, my script for me. So mm. they, at one, about two years ago, they made Carlitos an honorary woman. <laughs> and how does he feel about that? Uh, 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 that's quite a compliment. Now, what are your thoughts on the administration today? You know, they say that President Aquino's performance ratings are going down. Mm -hmm. How do you think it would have been different if we had FPJ as president? Uh, well, I can't really say for sure. But the reason why I liked FPJ was because he was, he was sincere. Okay. Mm. Um, what wala siyang under the table. Um, mm. I know for a fact that there was great money that he turned down mm -hmm. uh, during his candidacy. Kasi mm -hmm. sabi niya, saan galing yung pera na yan ay pang tutulong sa akin? Anong hihingiin kapalit niyan pag mm. uh, naupo yan? Mm. Do you see that in his daughter? Well, do you think that she's gonna carry on this torch properly? Yeah, I think properly? so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Si FPJ, pat pati yung attachment ko sa kanya kasi when I had my mastectomy, he visited me in the hospital. Mm -hmm. He looked so healthy and he looked so guapo mm -hmm. and he visited me in the hospital. And then I was in New York for my second opinion and then he collapsed on my birthday, December 11. Oh. So talagang, I, I go back to the time and parang, parang the message was, was there. So yeah. ang, ang lakas ng position namin ni Carlito sa anti-fraud. Yeah. So finally, what are some of the projects that we can look forward to that you're doing? Me? Well, I'm, I'm writing and directing. Well, uh, I have a writer but I help her with the writing. Uh, Vampire ang daddy ko. That's Vic Soto. Yes. Um, I, I like working with Vic. Um, he's been a great friend since our school book all Yeah, days. you go way back. And then, okay, Cafe Rico and, mm. you know, the and Think of the series. Okay. And then, um, what else? Uh, you're doing some, you're right, we're still doing some books. We're hoping to get into Cinemalaya, yeah, so yeah. Carlitos, and then doing some books. And yeah. then I'm appearing as an actress again in, in a uh, tele, tele series. Theory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For uh, for Channel Five for ABC, so right. I work every day, and then I, I have work in the MTRCB, and mm -hmm. then there's uh, the um, I can serve. So mm -hmm. there's mothering and being. It's a very busy life, and yeah. wonder and a happy I, I, I one. Can't, I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it um, any other way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for tonight. I'd like to thank again our guest, Bibeth Orteza, for being with us tonight. Join us again next Thursday for another round of discussion here on News Cafe. I'm Mitzi Borromeo. Good night.